my name is Safina Oberoi, and I own a Frank Lloyd Wright designed home, or rather, should I say, a house designed by the esteemed Mr. Wright owns me. That is the most truthful thing I can say about an experience which has been equal parts exhilarating and searing. Five years ago, I was totally unqualified to be in this position. I didn't know about Wright. I hadn't studied architecture. I wasn't even American, but I was in love. And maybe that counted for a little more than I realized. The Tompkins house was the first thing my husband Lucas and I were equally and totally passionate about. Built in 1955, the Tompkins house is a Usonian automatic, a bit like what Mark just mentioned. One of Wright's last iterations of modular, low cost housing. Hi, the Tonkins house was a gem. And Beverly Hall Tonkins, from whom we bought it, had maintained it beautifully. For the first few months, I just played Lady of the Manor. I felt fabulous. But ownership of a historic home comes with special responsibilities, especially in the US where there's little or no government support. And in fact, when we took on this house and the challenges of it, we had very little idea of what we were going into and no support. This was the roof of the home when we bought it. Yes, that's a tree. Yes, that's all moss. Yes, that's not deliberately a green roof. It's a measure of our self-deception that we convinced ourselves it was an easy fix. Lucas had the best roofers in the state assess it. We got a very expensive contractor and an architect came and talked down to us about it. We all started work, but then you see this, this is a preservationist nightmare. This was the work of the contractor who soda blasted the house. You can see the damage where the soda has gone through the blocks. Not only that, in an in enthusiasm to overhaul the roof, he removed the copper coping, damaging every one of 292 blocks. We were horrified. How had this happened on our watch? Lucas and I fought all the time during that period. We did only one good thing. A giant barn was built over the house, a massive white elephant but it was a protective structure which allowed us to take our time to do what was right, pun intended. We began a torturous dance. So even when we worked out how to do something, we couldn't find anyone to do it. There were only two kinds of contractors. One who pretended to want the project, but then never showed up again. <laughs> or those who wanted the project, but pretended to be qualified. Frustrated, I went back to school. At the age of 50, I found myself sitting in a room full of bright young architects. I would have been totally intimidated if it hadn't been so absolutely urgent that I learn. I became that annoying student who won't stop asking questions and follows the teachers around. Meanwhile, Lucas did something more practical. He bought me a truck, that truck. If you have a truck, you are swimming in the material reality of construction. There's something kind of utterly liberating and sort of Wrightian, modern day Wrightian about that. I climbed out of depression and into the driving seat. This is my dog Goldie and me going to look for cinder, the ingredient which gave the Tonkins house block their special reddish hue. Cinder was a byproduct of steel production, so no one had it anymore, but we found it under that overgrown hillock. We loaded the entire truck for 100 bucks. Our goal was to repair these blocks. So you can see from having been wet for so long, they were really fragile. A little tap and the ends fell off. There were 72 blocks which needed to be replaced. That was, it was that bad. Over the next few months, we moved, wooed every mason in this tri-state. No one wanted the job till we found these guys. M Concrete in Dayton, Ohio. And they became the first artisans to work on the project. You can see here, they're making the blocks 
uh, in the traditional way, but with reinforced concrete, uh, and they're reinforcing it with fiber, and we used it really like a tile. So we cut off the faces of the original blocks, and then we put the new blocks on with mechanical attachments and concrete slurry, which we poured through the top. So really, hey, look at that. Those are our two blocks. One is old, one is new. Even I can't tell the difference. You wanna guess? <laughs> it's the one on the right is the new one, but pretty damn close. The whole process of this kind of trial and error, you know, took us a year. And it, it applies to every other part of the project, whether it was reinforcing the cantilevers, strengthening the roof structure, replacing the electrical system, doing the data, improving the drainage, laying the insulation, working out how a bitumen roof could work. All of that took a long time. But now we have a new contractor, that's Natty Buck Contracting, give us a lot more room and support, Eric Lloyd Wright. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's grandson and the entire Frank Lloyd Wright <laughs> Conservancy has given us advance advice. Okay, the real point, Lucas and I are still married. Goldie has become the best construction dog ever. It's not a happy ending because owning a right house is a never ending process. It's what we've learned to have a great time along our journey. Thank you.